The question today is, should you use your name for your photography business? Go. No. <laughs> well, that was easy. Thank you so much for listening. Welcome to the Photography Opinion Podcast. We discuss all things photo, video, and camera related. I'm Ben Lucas. And I'm Stuart Marlantis. And this is Photo Op. All right, so here, here's a question for you. Everyone and their mother has a Facebook page and claims to be a photographer. That's just literally Sadly. almost everyone on the planet. Nine times out of ten, it is falls into one of these two things. Uh, either they shoot families and uh, they call it uh, beautiful, indispensable moments photography mm -hmm. or something uh, if that is actually your business name i apologize that was just the first cliche thing that came off the top of my head also hashtag not sorry get a better name <laughs> or they call it john doe photography so the question today is should you use your name for your photography business go no <laughs> well that was easy thank you so much for listening <laughs> Uh, unfortunately it is more difficult than that. Um, but, but yeah, that truly, that is my initial reaction is no, I have been, I have been a, probably to the dislike of many people. I have been extremely consistent about this over the years. I don't like the, your name photography naming convention. I think it's very amateurish. I don't like it at all. I just don't like, don't use it. I am suspicious of anybody that uses it and I don't really want to give my money to anybody that uses it. Yeah. Um, that being said, there are exceptions to that rule, certainly. But. There are definitely exceptions. But mm -hmm. when I was getting started, I absolutely felt the exact same way <laughs> because literally everyone was Jane Smith photography, John Doe photography, yeah. you know, whatever photography. And I'm just like, oh, my God, everyone has a My Name Photography page. I can't take any of these people seriously, and I don't want to be one of them. I'm going to come up with a name no one on the Internet has, and it is a name that still confuses people to this day. Nom Creative on YouTube, Patreon, all that stuff. Find me, Nom Creative. Literally any spot on the internet, Nom N O M, as in November Oscar Mike. Not I am not creative. It is Nom as in Om Nom Nom, which, which again now the fact that I have to explain this to you because you can't see the written form or the logo or the business card with the bite mark out of it. See, see how this has caused problems for me over the years because I am a very smart person and I knew what I was doing and said I'm not doing my name photography. Exhibit A, the downside to choosing a name that isn't <laughs> your name photography. <laughs> But yeah, you know, I, I do feel a little bit bad for people that have been doing photography as a business for a long time because this your name photography trend is very recent. This is like a Facebook era trend. Like it's only been around oh, for very much. I so. mean, it's been around for an increasingly long period of time, unfortunately, because we're we'll getting say, old. But, let's say like you know, 15 plus years, yeah, maybe, but maybe at the most. Yeah. But like it's a, it's a recent thing. This is a social media era quirk of naming and so there have been a lot of people that you know, this wasn't a big deal before like if you were a photographer before one the barrier to entry was much higher but two there were less just there's less like digital promotion out there if there was digital promotion at all so if you used your name photography no big deal like even if there were a decent number of people out there in the universe doing that same naming convention you never heard from or saw them anywhere but now with social media and with the low barrier to entry for photography, uh, everybody is just going with that because they don't have to think about it, basically. <laughs> here's here's the here's the ex exception to the rule mm -hmm. that I would say. Yeah. Um, think about anybody famous and mm -hmm. think about if any of them don't use their own name as their thing. It's Joe McNally. Mm -hmm. It's Danny Diamond. It's Zach Arias. They yeah. all use their own name, but they're also famous, and I'm not. So are the rules different? <laughs> yeah, I would I would say yes. The rules are different for them. Like, you could, uh, and I'm sure somebody's going to come out and say, oh, well, you know, this person has their name photography, and they blew up last year, and now they're really famous. And see, like, the, you can call it your name photography, and it's fine. Like, I understand there's going to be exceptions to the rule if you're truly an exceptional 
talent, um, then yeah, you can get away with this. And for people like them, um, where they where they are famous and generally, like I said, they've probably been working a lot of a lot of those famous names have been working in the industry longer than fifteen years. Like they had this naming convention before it was a popular social media. Funny thing story. To do. I, I know that Zacharias did not because mm -hmm. he used his name. And then once he started getting calls from the likes of people like the CEO of Coca-Cola, he's like, oh, that's a really stupid name. Mm -hmm. I should stop using it. All of the big people just use their own name. I'm going to use my own name just like everybody else. Yeah. And that's fine. But he was getting calls from Coca-Cola. Like if you're getting calls from Coca-Cola, fine. <laughs> use your name. You're, you're good enough. Like go for it, dude. Like whatever. <laughs> But, you know, I also understand it's difficult. Naming stuff is so difficult. I have spent so many hours agonizing over naming things, titling things. Like, I have thought about different business ideas. I've helped people with business ideas. And, like, naming is incredibly difficult and incredibly frustrating. So, I totally understand the trap of, like, I don't know what a good name would be. I'm just going to go with my name because that's what I'm familiar with. Yeah. That's, at least to me, feels unique and uh, you know it's my name what's wrong with using my name so I, I totally get the trap that you fall into there um and for somebody like me uh it's easier it was it's potentially easier for me to go with that angle because i know i am the only one with my name in the world and i do know that basically for, for an fact. absolute fact um so for me if i was to call it you know my name you know my name photography no big deal like i'm the only one in the world with that but for so so Stuart Marlantis photography seriously yeah. go Google him he's the only one who shows up <laughs> yeah. if you Google my name you get a like a photographer in Canada who mm -hmm. has got to be close to retirement by now you get an actor a director a rugby player someone in Australia who maybe does all of those things um, yeah. and so it depends and on like your name. Ben Lucas dot com was taken Ben yeah. Lucas photography was taken mm -hmm. like. All of the things that had my name in them were already taken. I did not have that unique of a name. If I made a Ben Lucas photography Facebook page, they'd be like, hey, your URL is already taken. I was having issues signing up for social media handles because they're already taken by somebody. So for me, it was I do not have a Stuart Marlantis name. Mm. I need something that is unique and can forever be nabbed first whenever new things pop up. Yeah. Yeah. Um which which I did, and there have been a few like clones or people that are like, "Hey, can I buy your name?" And I'm like, "You have one follower and ten likes. No, no, <laughs> go away." Also, cease and desist. Here's my trademark, which is, by the way, registered trademark. So literally, don't use my name, or you will have to hear from my lawyer because that's that's how that works. How do you feel about um? How do you feel about just last name? I've seen this a couple times where it's, uh, you know, in, in your case, it would be Lucas Photography. What do you feel about that? I mean, it, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Um, it just comes down to, I mean, it really just comes down to, like, what is it that people are are getting? Here, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll put this out there as an example, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh... I was thinking if there's a way to do this without saying his name. There is not. Sal Sincata. We're about mm -hmm. to talk about him. This is gonna be this is gonna be fun. All right. So Sal Sincata Photography. When you hire Sal Sincata Photography, you get Sal Sincata. That's that's it. You get that dude. Mm -hmm. He has a stable of photographers that he trains that all have a unique and kind of uh, melded vision and uh, basically you don't get to pick who you get you're just like hey dude I'm gonna send somebody they're gonna be trained by me they're gonna be edited by my edited company this is the expectation and level of quality you can get mm -hmm. and that is called Studio C for his last name Sincata he can still sell Studio C when he retires he cannot really sell Sal Sincata because mm -hmm. then people are going to be like, cool, where's Sal? And be like, oh, him? He died. I'm I'm the new business owner. My name's John Smith, but I own <laughs> Sal Sincata Photography. Like, that doesn't... 
Right. I'm not convinced. <laughs> exactly. So not that I ever plan on selling my name. It will probably mm-hmm. die and retire with me. But I mean, that's another consideration, too. Mm-hmm. Well, and also the nature of the work that you're doing. So um, in your case, nom creative, like it isn't nom photography like you could move in different directions you could i thought add... i was gonna do graphic design when i made the name honestly I mean, well and you can and that's and that's <laughs> the the, the kind of cool thing about doing a name that isn't your name photographer or actually isn't anything photography is that potentially you can spin that into a different angle like if you were like you know forget photography i'm only going to shoot video, video and yeah. do nothing else or i'm only going to do graphic design like i decided that i want to do that you can do that and still preserve your name your business um and pivot under that same name and and preserve potentially some of those some of that you know business name that's been built up over all of the years yeah and there's something to be said for that um some people are very sure of what they want to do and that's great um i would hesitate to be as sure unless you're like already famous for it like at least in my case my career path has been so serpentine over the years that like i was like I, i'm that kind of person but i You're, so i so encourage for, people to to give yourself some room <laughs> give yourself some room to change like it's okay so, so for those of you who have not heard this story before and do not know Stuart, uh basically he is a magical unicorn jack of all trades where when he goes to look for a job he doesn't really qualify for any of them <laughs> ever (laughs) basically he is completely unqualified for every job that exists on the market but then they see he's a magical unicorn and they make a new job for him (laughs) and he basically replaces a whole team of people they would have had to otherwise hire and then that that is that is stewart's job history did i get that pretty accurate yeah, pretty much. I, yeah, I, okay, uh, there we go. <laughs> being, a, being a generalist is very hard to sell to people because they're like, well, what's your thing? What do you do better than anybody else? Well, I don't do anything better than anybody else, but that's a good thing. Like, I can do many things. Yeah, I, sure. can, I can solve all of your problems yeah, sure. at 90%. Yeah, sure. None of them are at 100%. They're all at, you know, 70 to 90%. Yeah. But I at least have this ability to, to versus i i feel like i have gone to the far extreme opposite side of the spectrum mm-hmm. i have one skill <laughs> maybe two <laughs> but that skill number two is a subset of skill number one mm-hmm. i can shoot and then edit and that's kind of it <laughs> like um but there's... the upside is that's so easy to pitch to people like you're like yeah, this is what I do. This is this is the one this thing I do. I I just uh, got a job offer uh, f- for an, a stupidly absurd amount of money for uh, Cinema 4D, and I don't know that program. I have never used that program. I'm like, ah, oh, if only I were Stuart <laughs> and at least had some passing familiarity, but I do not. <laughs> so so all this to say <laughs> is that. Maybe a part of your name consideration should be you might your path might change. Uh, you you know, can use your name. You're probably yeah. not going to change your name. But mm-hmm. my name photography, that exact iteration, it feels so amateurish and literally everyone else does it. And if the, you don't have the most common name on earth, mm-hmm. no one's going to care. No one's going to remember you. They're going to find six other photographers when they Google that before they find you. Mm-hmm. Plus, like in the Sal Sincata um, example, like if you're ever let's let's hope for everybody out there that you your business becomes mega successful, so successful that you're going to hire full time employees to work for you. Like if you've got a name that's, that has a little bit more wiggle room, that could be more of the name of a of a studio or an agency or something and not just you, you as can an just individual dr- person. You can just drop the photography. Yeah, you could do that. And you can continue to grow like you can continue to grow your business. And um, if you just yeah, if it's just your name and it's just you and that is tied to you as an individual, things start to get a little bit messier. But, you know, that might be part of your branding. If your branding is you as an individual. OK, like I understand, like maybe you're an influencer or something. See, now I'm and... thinking about fashion brands and yeah. literally like every fashion brand is just the person's name. Yeah. Well. Except for like what, like Supreme? <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> but they sell bricks for five hundred dollars, so what do they know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I guess if it is if it if the identity of the business is inherently tied to you as an individual and you are the brand and that's key to the thing, okay. But you're still gonna be seen as amateurish by I feel like an increasingly large number of people. I think this didn't used to be as big of a complaint as it is now. I'm seeing more and more people yeah. be against this as a naming convention. I, um, I, I feel like the two naming conventions you should avoid are, uh, if you're a wedding photographer, stay away from literally all of the cliche wedding mm -hmm. photographer things. Um, I'm just going to start spouting some. And full disclaimer, none of these are people that I actually know none of these are businesses that exist as far as I'm aware. If this is your business name, maybe take a second and think about that. Okay. <laughs> so let's see, uh, inspiring memories, beautiful moments, uh, once upon a time, um, uh, uh, forever in love, like all of these kinds of just like the most cliche, uh, wedding names of just like oh i shoot weddings first of all uh you're never gonna get hired by coca-cola that's that's not gonna happen uh you have definitely pigeon your hold yourself into that genre of photography but the second thing too is no one's gonna remember because that is they're just gonna be like yeah generic. it was that um it was that sunset moment something or other breathless romance mm. photography that one well, that's a good point. Like the the memorability of of your name and or an alternative name that you choose is, is a big part of it. Like the, your brand should be memorable. It should be ideally easy to say. It should be ultra ideally easy to spell. And I realize a lot of names um, aren't that way. Like my last name is has been a well actually both my first and last name have been a problem for my entire life. People don't know what spelling it is. They always mess it up that my first name is all is is kind of the last name version of the name and it's always been an issue. So if I were to uh, say it out loud, say Stuart Marlantis photography, nobody could. Well, maybe not nobody. A very small number of people could spell that correctly. And, and put is it that into Stuart with a U or a W? Like yeah, there are e, those kinds e, of. W, yep. Yeah, it's it's very, very complicated. And so if you've got a name like that, I feel for you. Like, yes, it's a struggle your whole life. And that's how it is. So I once dated a girl who said my criteria for saying yes to someone who asked me out is they have to have a pronounceable last name <laughs> because well, mine is that's not. A far. That's a little far. <laughs> She's like, if I'm taking your name, it's got to be more pronounceable than mine. Okay, okay, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. But yeah, I mean, like, I I feel for you if you've got that if you've got that issue. But if you're looking at calling your business my name photography and your name has been a difficult subject your entire life, think about that for a moment. Just like <laughs> think about dealing with that even more. Maybe you don't want to do that. <laughs> That's true. Well, so so I will circle back to how kind of weird and complicated it is to explain my name okay mm. uh there's about to be some dead air if you're listening to this in podcast form but if you're watching on youtube there is my business card mm -hmm. if i hand you this business card it, it's got a bite out of it it's got the logo it says nom creative and you're like oh i get it now mm -hmm. and then uh i redesigned this card once i started shooting weddings because now it's got a couple and it's cute and it's got pancakes or not pancakes cupcakes and you're like oh he does this that's a cute couple and it's just clean straightforward design but the bite mark is the memorable part about this and pe people have come up to me i have never met and go are you the guy with the bite out of his business card so-and-so handed me your card at whatever event and said, like, this guy's great, of, like, I don't care how people remember me as long as they do. And so, for me, this was the kind of the uh, memorable chichki hook that got people, but it works. Yep. So, yeah, maybe it doesn't make that much sense anymore, but when I hand someone my business card, they laugh, and even if they immediately throw it away they are going to remember and be able to look me up later. So, as Which we I have feel I feel that's the more important part. Yeah, yeah. Can people remember and look you up later if they look at your card and throw it away? Yeah. Well, 
I think that's as good a place as any to leave it. Uh, your name should be memorable. Like, th- think very carefully if you're going to do your name photography. Make sure it's memorable. Make sure that people can find you and remember you and hopefully that helps your business grow but uh ben lucas photography whoever you are i'm coming for you <laughs> as you've seen in this conversation this has been a long messy conversation and naming your business is a long messy process and we feel for you um even if we critique these names somewhat harshly <laughs> it's a difficult thing to do we get it um but we it want is. you to succeed and you're going to succeed better if you've got a a cool memorable unique name I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw out my final tip. If you are just starting out and you're like trying to make like a Facebook page and be like, darn, what do I name it? Here's the more important thing. It doesn't matter. <laughs> make good work that people want to pay you money for. You can figure out your name after that. Before yep. that, it does not matter at all. So with that nugget of wisdom, go forth, make a John Smith photography page, live out your dreams of being a professional with your new Canon Rebel XSI. (laughs) That was my first camera. Yeah. (laughs) We'll see you next time. If you have questions or ideas for future episodes, you can email us at hello at photo dash op dot show. Watch us on Ben's YouTube channel at Nom Creative. As in Om Nom Nom. Share this with a friend and you can listen to Photo Op anywhere podcasts are sold. Or download it. Because it's free.